So we will be looking at Surah 38 verse 44 and comparing that, also looking at the Tafsirs as well as comparing that with Surah 66 verse 12. But remembering, remembering the statements where Allah states in the Quran that um, they, Muslims do not make any distinction between the prophets. Um, and then we see actually how does it work in practice. So Surah 38 verse 44. Daughter of Christ, would you like to read it for us? Yes, uh, Surah 38 verse 44. And we said to him, take in your hand a bundle of grass and strike your wife with it and do not break your oath. We truly found him patient what an excellent servant he was. Indeed, he constantly turned to Allah. Very excellent, sister, that he beat his wife with the grass. Would you like to read it Arabic for us, sister? Yes, it says, وَخُذْ بِيَدِكَ ضِخْفًا فَضْرِبْ بِهِ وَلَا تَحْنَثْ إِنَّا وَجَدْنَاهُ صَابِرًا نِعْمَ الْعَبْدُ إِنَّهُ أَوَّابُ Yeah, so the Arabic says, take in your hand some grass and strike your wife with it. Uh, your wife is in brackets. Um, it just says in the Arabic, and strike with it. Uh, but in the context, it is his wife. Uh, we have found him uh, patient. Uh, he is uh, constantly turning to Allah. So that word, a web at the end. He's talking about Job. So, Islamic Job is very much patient. He's so patient, he's going to beat his wife. Yeah, I mean, um, we're not surprised, sister, from the Quran because um, because uh, Quran itself tells us that there is no distinction between the prophets. It says that in uh, Surah three, verse eighty-four, and Surah two, verse two eight five. That means that all the prophets are meant to be uh, the same or similar, and so because we know Muhammad. You know, said he beat Aisha, and he says in the Quran to beat your wife. So why are you surprised that another prophet beats his wife? Um, I'm surprised why people at the first place would stay beat stay your wife, uh, not another prophet, but at the first place they beat their wife. So Surah 38, verse 44, supposed to be well detailed, well explained. But what I'm gonna do is. Since it is very much well detailed, well explained, where Islamic job is told to beat his wife, let's uh, let's first go and read the Ibn Abbas, where Ibn Abbas is gonna fill in the space and then tell us the background of it. So let me let me read it. Um, Ibn Abbas thirty eight forty four, and it was said to him. Take in the hand, O Job, of hundred spikes of grain, and smut with it your wife, Rahman, the daughter of Prophet Joseph. This is because he vowed before if Allah were curry him, he would flog his wife hundred lashes, because she said something which he which did not please Allah. Wow. If Allah were to cure, cure him, heal him, my pronunciation is probably very bad. If Allah is to heal him, he would flog his wife with hundred lashes. Even the uh, flogging on the movies don't look very nice. But in this occasion, hundred lashes. That is Ibn Abbas. Let me take us to... Uh, Jalalayan, so that we will make sense of it a little bit. Daughter of Christ, do you want to read Jalalayan for us? Yeah, so Jalalayan it says, And we said to him, Take in your hand a bunch of twigs, or some blades of grass, and smite therewith your wife. For he had sworn to smite her a hundred times on one occasion, when she was late in coming to him. And do not break your oath by not smiting her. So he took a hundred rushes um, rushes and smote her with them once and that sufficed to fulfill his oath truly we found him to be steadfast what an excellent servant was job indeed he was a, a penitent soul always returning to god 
Wow. So it's funny that in this tafsir, sister, they say, oh, he he hit her. What an excellent servant he was. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but um, it's just sad. So how do we know if someone is excellent servant? It's not we look up to him and then we see how he steps in, humble himself and then serves. But you look up someone and then you see that someone is beating his wife, flogging his wife. That shows you how excellent godly man that person is. I would have thought Allah would have been angry at him for making an oath to hit his wife a hundred lashes. Allah would have said, should have said, you're not being merciful. Instead, he said, no, do it. What an excellent person you are. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense to me, sister. So let's let's go back to Surah 38, verse 44 again, so that we can see. And we said to him, take it, take in your hand a bundle of grass and strike your wife with it and do not break your oath. So, Allah doesn't want his prophets, his servants, his slaves to break their oath. And even their oath is simply beating their wife. Okay, I can't, I can't, I cannot see the word handkerchief or I cannot see the word toothbrush. Okay, it says strike and then Tafsir was saying flog. So that, they, that doesn't look like handkerchief at all. And Allah doesn't want husband to break the oath so that wife can get away without not being beaten. Uh, people are asking, um, so f to be cured, he had to hit her a hundred times? Then they're, they're not sure what the association is with the yeah, so cured. Yeah, we are going to go break it down. So that was Jalalayan. Let me get rid of this chronic verse. And then turn to Tafsir al-Jalalayan. Would you like to read it, Daughter of Christ? Yeah, so it says, and we said to him, take in your hand a bunch of twigs or some blades of grass and smite therewith your wife. For he had sworn to smite her a hundred times on one occasion when she was late in coming to him. And do not break your oath by not smiting her. So he took a hundred rushes and smote her with them once and that sufficed to fulfill his oath. We found him steadfast and excellent servant. Okay, sorry, I think I needed to go to Ibn Abbas. I went to Jalalayan. I apologize for that. Uh, yeah, this one, sorry. Yes, it was this one. Um, shall we read? Um, and it was said to him, Take in thine hand, O Job, a branch of a hundred spikes of grain, and smite therewith with it your wife, Raman, the daughter of the prophet Joseph, and break not thine oath, because he vowed before that if Allah were to cure him, he would flog his wife a hundred lashes because she said something which did not please Allah. So, um, it's not like if he flogs his wife hundred lashes that he will get healed. It is apparently in this occasion that she said something didn't Allah didn't please. And another occasion because she didn't turn up on time. But in the bottom line is... Allah doesn't want Islamic job to break his oath and let his wife to get away with that. Hundred lashes, hundred flocks. That just doesn't look good to me at all. At the f of course, there is a question why this takes place at the first place. Another question is why Allah is encouraging such a thing because Islam teaches, actually, you can break your oath and then make another oath like we get to see in Surah 66 where Muhammad just cheats on his wife and then he breaks the oath and then Allah says, oh, it's okay. Just Actually, Allah encourages him to break the oath. What I don't understand, sister, is uh, Muslim tafsir seems to be confused as to what she did to deserve the hundred lashes, which is what I'm interested in, really. One says she was late in coming to him when he called her. And the other one says, 
she said something not pleasing to Allah. So which which one is it? Oh, well, this simply shows us how even Islamic tradition is not Islamic tradition is not uh, sure what is really really happening, and this is supposed to be Quran which is well detailed, well explained, and Tafsir steps in to help us to understand well detailed, well explained Quran. Yeah, the Quran doesn't tell us. Oh, excuse me, Sorry. excuse me, excuse me. Someone is just officially telling <laughs> us Allah in his word is lying. Oh. And someone is officially telling us Mr. Ibn Abbas and Al-Jalalayan are lying. Mm. I'm guessing you are ex-Muslim at this stage. You know who Ibn Abbas is? He's Muhammad's cousin. I know. Your prophet Muhammad's cousin. If Muhammad is a liar, you wouldn't be surprised that his um, uncle is liar. Muslims, therefore, would think, yeah, it's all liar and liar. Mm. Please, can we please, can you please point out to us where Allah is lying in Surah 38, verse 44, and where Ibn Abbas is lying, and where is Al Jalalayan is lying. Since they are all lying, and it's like big club, seems to me. In this lying club, it might be helpful that we pinpoint their lies. Their what was that person's name? Hayes. Hayes. Yeah. So I um, would you please be kind enough and then tell us? Yeah. Can you tell us what the story is then? Uh, I'm I'm not surprised he doesn't know because the Quran itself it doesn't say who is being beaten. It doesn't say why. It just it doesn't say with what he's beating. It just says beat, beat and fulfill your oath. Unfortunately, the the de detailed Quran doesn't tell us the story. So, uh, can you please tell us what the story is? <laughs> if if all your uh, main interpreters of uh, tafsir are lying. Well, as you can see, thought of Christ is very much gentle. Uh, I, I am more curious on where is it Allah lying? How did you? figured out that Allah is lying. I thought Allah was all all knowing, all wise. And how where which part of Ibn Abbas is a liar? And how did you uh figure that out? And same for Jalalayan. Yeah, don't don't start hiding now, Hayes. Uh you you were quick to say you were lying, so bring bring your answer please. Uh, and why is sister is he saying we're lying? Is it because he's embarrassed of this story that's in the Muslim tafsirs in the Quran? What uh, daughter of Christ? I don't want to correct you, but he wasn't saying we are lying because we are simply reading this something. So, if anything is coming out from my mouth, identified as a liar while I am reading something. That means the source is a liar. Oh, okay. And the source I was reading was Surah 38, verse 44. Last time when I checked, it was in the Quran. Last time when I checked, it was in the Quran, and I'm sure it is still in the Quran. Let me find it, that we don't misrepresent it. Yep, it's in here. You can see Surah... 38 verse 44 where my, my finger is this is surah 38 verse 44 and other one was jalalayan and other one was ibn Abbas. so how did how did you figure out that they were lying how did you figure out that they were lying uh, please explain to us what happened to this gentleman yeah he's disappeared now uh and if they're lying, then go to altafsir.com, which is um, a Muslim website. Complain about it and then take that down. Yeah, tell them to stop spreading those lies and Islamophobic things from Ibn Abbas and from Jalalain. Is it my eyes or like since then I didn't see any comment from I him? I haven't seen him. He ran away. He wouldn't run away. He ran away because he's embarrassed. Anyway, just like I think it is just sometimes it is really, really unnecessary. When, as a Muslim, you're supposed to be faithfully obey the word of Allah and then take the teachings of your scholars, you call them liar. It's just like, not only there are holes in the narrative, but it seems there are holes 
in the sayings of Allah. That's I think that's all like problem. That is all problem. Oh, he was timed out. We wouldn't time him out, dear moderators. I do hope that that hasn't happened because like calling individuals lie, I'm not sure if that is oh well, you've done the judgment. I cannot comment on that judgment, but anyway. So now we I then we kind of come to the conclusion Allah cannot lie. Oh yeah, uh, sorry, apparently yes, he was timed out. So since you are back, sir, I can see you are back. Um, dear sir, would you be kind enough and then tell us where, how did you spot out that Allah is a liar, Ibn Abbas is a liar, and also Jalalayan is a liar? Ayat is talking about his wife, who is beating the wife. Did you left your ear as you were timed out or somewhere? Did we say that it was so he was talking about his daughter? Did we say that he was talking about his uncle? <laughs> no, we said about look at the title of the video, beating of the wife. W I F E. So, can they not hear as well, sister? Not just read. So Islamic job is beating his wife with hundred lashes. Is that true? Or is that false, dear Mr. Muslim? I'm assuming you are Muslim. Yeah, we're all waiting for you now. Don't hide. Until we get a response from him. He had a timeout. In that timeout time, like you should be able to put all the references together. I'm not sure why. Like, timeout thing is like a lot of, that was a lot of time. So, let me, okay, let me just, do something here so um my guess is sister is the imams don't talk to muslims about this story uh because that's why muslims are not familiar with it um and i wonder why is it because it's embarrassing it's embarrassing that one of the one of the <laughs> main prophets of islam is beating his wife a hundred times and vowing to beat his wife a hundred times for being late. Okay, so um, okay, here's the comment. Is that okay? So let's so uh, remember, we were told Allah is a liar, Ibn Abbas is a liar, Al Jalalayan is liar. This shows the mercy of Allah because He didn't want Ayub to hurt her. Hmm. Ayub is like Islamic job, so. Allah, this shows Allah's mercy because Allah didn't want Job, Islamic Job, to hit, uh, hurt his wife. All, all he could do was get away with hundred flog, flogging of hundred times. Like not once, even once is a problem. There is nothing implies in that sentence like handkerchief or, or toothbrush or anything hundred flogs hundred even when you watch them on the movies they are very much bad and you think that is Allah is showing mercy even like your understanding of mercy does not match with Oxford dictionary let alone human mind how come this be mercy? You chop people's head off. That was Allah's mercy. You beat the <laughs> wife hundred lashes. That's Allah's mercy. Wow. What if he wasn't merciful? Yeah, what would happen? <laughs> Take the skin off your? If he wanted to be merciful, why didn't he just say, don't beat her? It's okay. You don't have to do this. He does it with Muhammad in Surah 66 verse 2. He says, you don't have to do your oath. So that's when Muhammad wanted to sleep with the sex slave and he mm -hmm. did an oath not to. So, so Allah is merciful because the oaths are very important. Oaths are very important to Allah. Are you sure? Because last time when I checked your Quran, your Quran, um, you can make better oaths and then discredit the previous oath. 
It's not only that Allah encouraged Muhammad to break his oath. How can they are very important to Allah? You know, it's quite okay. It is quite okay on DCCI's live streams that you express that you are apostate. Because so far what you are saying is not backed up by Allah. Yeah, we won't judge you. Surah we will judge you. <laughs> we will judge you. <laughs> for leaving Islam. Surah 66 verse 2, Hayes. Allah has ordained for you to dissolve your oaths. Yeah, so I, how can you say oaths are important to Allah? Was Allah lying in Surah 66 verse 2 or are you lying? And you've got the hadiths that you can make better oaths. It's just like, it doesn't match, doesn't match. Yeah, he just asked, which ayah is it to break the oath? Surah 66 verse 2, Hayes. That's okay, because they get to hear 20 seconds after, yeah, I'm saying, after we speak. Yeah, I'm so. saying it again, because he, I don't think he brought his ears, sister. He, he thought he was speaking about someone else, not the wife of Job. And you should know your Quran. You shouldn't be asking me which verse. You, sh you are the Muslim, remember? And you're the one who knows if we're lying or not. It wasn't me, sister. I corrected you on that. <laughs> it is, so if you are reading, if you are reading from this book, okay if you are reading from this book as it is okay and then person hears what you are saying and then tells you you are lying that means this book is a liar this book is a liar we read it from the quran it's been read from ibn abbas uncle of muhammad relative of muhammad the one you look up to jalalayan one of your scholars if you word by word by word as they've been read out and then if you identify them as a liar what do you want me to say so i have a question don't follow liars liars are taking you to hell do not follow the liars i have a question sister since this Hayes person says oaths are very important to allah what if you make your what if you make an oath that's evil what if you make an oath to kill your mother Will you then have to kill your mother? This Job in uh, the Quran made an oath to flog his wife a hundred times. Why would Allah make him honor such an evil oath? It's not Allah make him honor. Allah encourages him to do so. Allah says, oops, your oath is important. Go and do. But when Muhammad is sleeping, uh, sleeping around with someone else on Hafsa's bed, Allah is quite okay for Muhammad to break his oath. But when it comes to practicing violence to the woman with hundred lashes, flog, Allah is not that much okay. Uh, sister, there's a fight in the chat. There's another Muslim calling this Muslim haze an ignorant Muslim. Griffin01, he's saying, stop uh, talking to an ignorant Muslim and ask me. Uh, don't uh, Muslims are turning on, in, on on each other because of the book of Allah, sister. Okay, I'm okay. This is official. This person is a, this person has nothing to do with Islam. Did we just not give you Surah sixty six? Surah sixty six, verse twelve. Verse twelve. Verse two. Verse two sorry, Surah sixty six, verse two, where Allah is encouraging Muhammad to break his oath. I told you he didn't bring his ears. That's and why well, I said it. Got eyes. That's why I said it twice. <laughs> so you don't have ears. You've got hands. You've got eyes. You can like using your hands. Go to the Quran. Surah sixty six, at Tahrim, verse two. Allah talking to Muhammad, saying, "Yeah, you can break your oath, and all the believers as well." That is while Quran, Surah four, verse one hundred fifty two, three eighty four, two one thirty six, two two eighty five says we make no distinction between the prophets Allah is strongly encouraging Islamic job to keep his oath and beat his wife with hundred lashes that's not enough when it comes to Muhammad with his sexual desires and then lusting around and sleeping around all Allah does is like, oh, lovely Muhammad, it's going to hurt your feelings. Please break your oath. Wonderful.
Abbas is in the chat. He's talking to that Muslim, Hayes. He's not talking to us. I don't know why. He's talking to him. He's saying, Surah 62 verse 2 is telling Muhammad that he should not make oath that he will not do a particular thing which Allah did not make haram. So Allah told him to break such an oath. So let me get this straight. If something is haram, you should break it. You should break that oath and you shouldn't make it. So a um, hundred lashes to your wife is, is, is halal? It's okay? That, is that what you're saying? Are you sure it says hundred lashes? It might be like hundred toothbrushes <laughs> or handkerchief. So, uh, okay. First of all, the verse doesn't say that. He says that you can break your oath. It doesn't say that you should not make your oath. It says you can break it. That's the difference. Don't don't lie for your Quran. And, and yeah. don't improve on the language of the Quran. Quran is the best language. Second, if I, I go by what you say and you shouldn't do things that are haram as an oath, then why did Allah allow him to continue with the oath of a hundred lashes? That means a hundred lashes is okay. You just made your God to be very, very cruel. Either way, you win, you lose. Go on, sister. I think Muslims are, are just try, in the chat trying to work out an answer for this uh, amongst themselves. There are, there are problems. There are problems in a sense there is something wrong with Allah. There are lots of things wrong with Allah. I'm sorry, I stand corrected. There are lots of things wrong with Allah, but it seems there is something disturbing the wrong with Allah when Allah is encouraging man to be the wife, man to be the, with the wife, with, he would flog his wife hundred lashes. Flog his wife with hundred lashes. Not hundred cup of coffee, not hundred hot chocolate, but hundred lashes and then you can see islamic job can't even wait to uh, heal uh, as he's been ill soon after he gets healed he was like okay i've got to practice this i've got to practice this let me flog my wife uh, there's muslim in the chat called ibrahim he's being a very good muslim and calling us uneducated women because we have half a brain, I guess. That's why he's calling us that. Well, let me just before deal with him. Can I just say hello to Banks, uh, Banks style life? Uh, it's good to see you here, sir. Um, okay, so what was that, brother? Sorry, sister. Uh, his name is Ibrahim. Yeah. He says that we're uneducated women and we lie. And he said that we deserve a hundred lashes. <laughs> <laughs> because we read the Quran and we read the Tafsir, so we deserve lashes. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, I don't feel. I, I feel sorry for your wife or your I future am, wife. I am already on exile. I don't think at this these days I deserve anything. <laughs> but um, but just be just um, just be aware, just be aware of it. Like just reading. Oh, well, here's the problem. You have a problem for me to talk about Islam. Why don't you educate us? Like, I'm asking, I'm asking serious questions. I think, like, those questions are pretty serious. And instead of, like, doing insult, all those kind of things, you could simply just answer those basic questions and educate us. Yeah, you just educate us so we don't deserve the lashes, just so we can know. Instead of insulting us, just give us the answer. I don't understand why why the insults and the attacks. We're just reading from the tafsir. We didn't write it. We didn't write the Quran either. And we can see Islam defender Yahya is on the chat. Yahya, can you tell us? Can you be kind and tell us? why Allah is encouraging 
Eyüp to lash his wife with hundred lashes. And also, can you tell us why Allah wants Eyüp to practice his oath, yet in somehow, yet in somehow, encourages Muhammad to break his oath? Well, from his comments, sister, I don't think he has any problem with um, beating a woman from the comment that I just saw on the screen. So I don't think he'll have a, a problem with this verse or even with the prophet uh, beating his wife. Well, probably his wife will have a problem with him when he beats his wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that will go down very well. I think it's I I I I'm finding it's very much sad. I'm finding it is very very much sad. Like there is no need to time. Okay, I think we need to talk about our timeout practices. It seems our timeout practices is like we time out everyone so quickly. Well, we can't get an answer from him because he's got timed out, but. Anyway, um, let me bring the bring the references again because all I want us to learn all those references as much as we can, and then we. I don't know how would you kind of take that, but we can simply put our Muslim friends on the hundred lashes story and then ask them to explain to us. That shouldn't be that big deal. So, so uh, let me go to Ibn Abbas first. Daughter of Christ, would you like to read Ibn Abbas for us? Yep. So this is Surah 38, verse 44. Um, and it was said unto him, Take in your hand, O Job, a branch of a hundred spikes of grain, and smite therewith your wife, smite with it your wife, Rama, the daughter of the Prophet Joseph, and break it break not thine oath this is because he vowed before that if allah were to cure him he would flog his wife a hundred lashes because she said something which did not please allah and we found him steadfast in trial how excellent a slave lo he was ever turning in repentance ever obedient to allah uh, sister i don't think muslims know this verse very well from my experience from what i've seen and so i think this is new to them from what I've seen in the chat. What do you mean it is new to them, sister? It has been in the Quran since eternity beginning. From the eternity beginning, Allah simply, Allah simply planned Islamic job, Ayyub, to beat his wife with, flog his wife with hundred lashes. Since eternity beginning, and you are telling me it is new to the Muslims? Yeah, I, I don't think they know this verse. Uh, I really do because from what I've seen in the chat, they were like, which verse? You're lying. Uh, Mr. Hayes, I think you put him on the screen. He says it's not beat, it's hit. Uh, what's, hit what's hit, sister? Uh, what's hit? <laughs> is, is hit? Is hit like hug? What, what is hit? Hit is like when you ask someone to say, oh, yeah. have you got 10 minutes to meet up with me on... Saturday so that I can buy hot chocolate for you. Mm. Beat is when you f search all the house and then trying to find a uh, handkerchief and you can't find handkerchief. What you do is <laughs> you simply pull down the curtain and then you hang your wife from the curtain instead of handkerchief. So I think that's... This is the defense? That I, I'm thinking it's... that's a definition since <laughs> there is a big difference between beat and hit yes and apparently beat is beat is wrong word it's supposed it's to be hit, hit and then you are doing this hit yeah. okay with flog hundred lashes yeah like flogging have you ever watched them on the movies people die from flogging just so people know like i i still remember the scene on 12 years of slavery and this is people his wife. got flogged in that movie. So, oh, so we were wrong. It wasn't beat. It was hit. Oh, yes. sorry. Our, our, our bad. We're sorry. Yeah, hit. Hit is is very merciful. Allah is being very merciful. Yeah, you can. Apparently, you can hit someone, 
that doesn't hurt. Hundred lashes oh, even... won't hurt anyone. Hundred <laughs> lashes is just like simply like I don't know what would be a hundred lashes. Can you? Can someone please help me to understand? Oh, okay. What kind of hundred lashes wouldn't hurt anyone? And what kind of hit will you hit someone and not hurt? I mean, a tap will not hurt. Hurt. A nudge will not hurt. A hug does not hurt. But a hit, I think that hurts from the ah, from the word. I got it now. What is? I think Allah meant to say hug, H U G. Oh. But Muslims understood that as flog, F O F L O G. His wife hundred lashes and lashes is L A S H E S. So Allah meant hug. But it come out as flog. Wow. That's what you said, sister, earlier about the mercy of uh, Islam and Quran. The def- definition by Muslims is different. Yeah. When they mean mercy, they mean hit. <laughs> when, they mean, they mean. when they mean mercy, they mean like just take the head from the take the head off from the body. Wow. Okay. A hit doesn't hurt. Okay. Next time when someone hits you, go to the police. They say, oh, did it, oh, what happened? Oh, that someone hit me. Okay, they didn't hurt. <laughs> yeah, it's just like Don't 100 lashes. It. it was only 100 lashes. Yeah, it was nothing. Only 100. <laughs> it could be like more than that. And remember, this is a man hitting a woman. So it might not, it, it will hurt double more because the woman is weaker than him. And it's his wife. Okay, pa- okay, parent in now. Arabic is on Arabic, so they picked up the Arabic Arabic game. Okay, Ooh. so you know, sister, Allah's language, no one able to understand. Even Allah cannot understand. He misrepresents himself. Okay. So, um, what is the word in Arabic, sister? And in the verse, I read it again. Take in your hand a bundle of grass, and wadrib idrib is the word means to strike. Just a moment, like, you mean like strike, strike, not like a hug? Like punch, hit, uh, slap, uh, beat, all these uh, meanings is idrib, and it's the same word idribuhun in surah, um, uh, in uh, which surah? Surah 12? Surah, yeah, yes. Um, okay, let me, let me just get this, let me understand this, you know, like, as I think people express that we are women, sometimes we struggle with the understanding. So... The verse doesn't say hug. No. The word which has been used in the verse is, what is the Arabic word? Strike. Ed, edrib. Edrib. Uh, any Arabs? Uh, actually, I, I'm assuming that guy is Arab, but I don't think he is. Edrib means to hit, like you said, or strike. You told us this. Hit or strike, yes. Beat. Same word is in, I think it's Surah 424, sister, sorry. That, yeah, Surah 424 and then also Surah 812. Yeah, idribuhun, beat them. Idrib here is it's a fa'al amr, which means a verb as a command. Beat, beat with it. And sister, all the translations say it, and I'm not sure what the argument is here. Even he said it was hit. I'm not sure what the disagreement is. Yeah, try and bring the Arabic. It's so desperate. It says hit. Sorry, ma'am. Um, heartbreaking day my question is why are you trying to defend this when the verse says hit with it what, are you, what exactly are you trying to defend I'm not sure what the argument is sister argument is we are misrepresenting this is Okay, is there another Muslim? Yeah, sorry. Imper- imperative verb. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Yeah, verb means to as a command. Sorry, sister, go on. There is a condition of bringing for eyewitnesses to testify adultery before the hundred lashes apply. Oh, so she committed adultery now? <laughs> I thought she was just late. <laughs> I love, I, I love it when Yaya just jumps in, doesn't know what we're talking about, and yeah. says something else. Yeah, I think Yaya just heard, like, number 100. Yeah. And then he just jumped in. 
We are talking on Surah 48, verse 34, Surah 38, verse 44. How Allah encourages Job to beat his wife with hundred lashes. So are you saying, yeah, yeah, are you saying Ayub's wife, Job's wife, are you saying she committed adultery? Is that what you're saying? Wife of prophets are pretty crazy in Islam. Yeah, this one committed adultery and uh, apparently, I don't know if there are any witnesses, but uh, Allah says to beat her. Yeah, I yeah, just made things worse. A lot worse. Here's the Quranic verse again on the screen so that Muslims can do their best to try to justify. Oh, sister, your Arabic is just not good at all. Why? Not idrib is not beat. What is it? What is idrib if it's not beat? Can you it tell me? Context. Can you tell me? <laughs> it's hit. Uh, okay, it's contextual hit. What's that? What's contextual hit? It's not toothbrush, it's not toothpaste, it's not handkerchief, it is not all those kind of things. What is hit? Guys, what is hit? And if idrib is not hit, can you tell us what it is, please? Okay, I think what we will do is, let, let's just give people a little bit time. Um, and remember something very important, what those verses are proving to us. A false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. Allah is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. And Muhammad is not a prophet. Muhammad is not a prophet. If you want grace and mercy and love, Islam is not for you. But Jesus is the way, the truth, the way, the truth and the life. Jesus is the King of Kings who died to save us all. If you just repent and believe he took your sins on the cross, then mercy and grace, forgiveness and love, eternity can be yours. But Allah is a false God, a false God, a false God. Allah is a false God, a false, false God. If you want grace and mercy and love, Islam is not for you. But Jesus is the way, the truth, the way, the truth and the life. Jesus is the King of Kings who died to save us all. If you just repent and believe he took your sins on the cross, then mercy and grace, forgiveness and love, eternity can be yours. I think that's what Muslims told us so far as regarding Surah 38 verse 44. Here's the another quick response from Muslims. Yes, exactly here. He is heating with grass, hundred lashes with the grass, of course, but the word being used is hit, and clearly here he is hitting without hurting. Thank you, you are refuted. Leaving your books at home is something else. Leaving your ears at home is something else. Leaving your logic at home is something else. But above all, leaving your heart in somewhere else seems very much practiced in this answer. Doesn't matter, first of all, what he's beating her with. Handkerchief, toothpaste, toothbrush, all those kind of things. Hundred lashes. Even number doesn't matter. Why there is at, is Why is it at the first place? Like seriously, do you do you not think like I'm guessing guessing from your name that you are a man? 
I apologize if you are not a man, but like I like just you're supposed to be a little bit clever. You know, like Allah says so and you are not just you are not showing it, man. You should be able to show that. Little bit little bit brain please, little bit, just like it doesn't okay. matter, sister, what he's beating her with, like he said, is demeaning. Is demeaning. If I throw anything at you, even if it doesn't hurt you, I'm still throwing it at you. It's, like I said, demeaning. Imagine, okay, I don't want to be personal. Imagine your dad goes out and gets some leaves and grass, <laughs> uh, bits of uh, sh shrubs, and throws it at your mom a hundred times. It might not hurt her physically, but it's demeaning. It's embarrassing. It's punishing. Would you want that for your mom, your sister, your daughter? That's what we're trying to get at here. Allah doesn't mind about women being beaten. There, like we get to see that how Muhammad beat Aisha in Sahih Muslim twenty one twenty seven, and it's not only that. It's not only that. There is something in Allah and with his prophets strongly encouraging violence, not only encouraging violence, but also taking the value and dignity and honor of woman away. And that's not enough. The point was in the beginning we were trying to make it. Surah 4 verse 152, Surah 384, 2 136, 2 285. There is no distinction between the prophets. Allah is encouraging Islamic job or Ayyub to practice beating his wife with hundred lashes. Versus Muhammad is being caught in Surah 66 verse 2, 66 verse 2 caught in the bed, bed of Hafsa, with someone else who wasn't Hafsa while having sex. Muhammad promised that he will never do that again. Yet he did it again, and what happened? Allah stepped in and then said, Excuse me, Muhammad, why are you making an oath? Just break it. Why? Because Muhammad wanted to meet with his sexual desires. In this occasion, Allah is encouraging Ayub to beat his wife. Allah makes a distinction between prophets. Muslim makes a distinction between prophets, but in all occasions, all happens to is to human beings, their values, honors, and dignity is being taken away from them. Very much sad. Very, very, very much sad. Still, like, still the person who left his brain in somewhere else <laughs> simply says like not beat don't lie allah said hit with the grass uh hayes what's beat in arabic give me the word for beat in arabic hayes okay mm -hmm. and when you find it in the dictionary you will find it's the exact same word in surah 38 verse 44. when you when you tell me what the word beat is in arabic then we'll listen to you this is just like another level. It's like going round in circles. It's like talking to the wall. Don't insult the wall, sister. Tell me what the word... You can paint the wall and then change it. <laughs> I think if you speak to the wall long enough, it might actually give you a good answer. Uh, Hayes, go to the dictionary if you're not Arab. Or if you're Arab, you should know. What is the word to beat? You're embarrassing yourself. Honestly. Um, sister, we got our best talking about the Bible. Why? Why? Why is our best talking about the Bible? Because Muslims cannot answer. This is like it's been game for long and long and long time. Thank you, Anas Mont Montar. Thank you. He says uh, the word he wrote in Arabic. The word to beat is idrab. Thank you. I think you're Muslim as well from your comments. Go to the uh, verse and you'll find the word is the same. So once. Islam is on the ropes or every time when Islam is being questioned what we see is in somehow sad very much sad in somehow Muslims do not want to answer or defend Islam all they would do is 
attack the Bible. And that has been happening since this freaking man called Muhammad stepped into the Islamic tradition. His followers are doing the same thing. Just sad, like... <laughs> He's saying the word beat does not exist in Arabic. <laughs> Arabic is this crazy language where words are missing. Uh, if, the, if, if Arabic has missing words, why is Allah using it as a perfect language for his Quran? <laughs> He's saying the word beat does not exist in Arabic. So the word doesn't exist. It's not there. Hmm. So how would an Arab convey the meaning of uh, let me beat someone? What would he what would he use? So what Allah was using in Surah 434 in Surah 8. In Surah 38 verse 44. And if the word beat is not exist there, can I just gently ask why Muslims are beating their wives? Wow. If that's the case, then no Arab should be able to beat his wife. The word doesn't exist, according to Hayes. Muhammad again proved his <laughs> false prophet with Sahih Muslim 21-27 when he thought it was alright to beat his wife, his child wife. Wow, the Taqiyya level is like beyond today, sister. Even though uh, his Muslim brother Anas just wrote the word in Arabic in the chat for beat. But now the word does not exist in Arabic. Maybe that's different. Maybe th uh, th these individuals are from the different part of the world. No, but you can be from a different part of the world, but, but the word still exists in your language. No, sister. Come <laughs> on, sister. It is Arabic, okay? Maybe in Jordan, the word beat is not exist in Arabic, but in Morocco or in Algeria, it is exist. Oh, okay. That's... Okay, okay. I don't know. Like, how does it happen? In Samha... It end up in this Quran. It is in here. Somehow it is in Al Jalalayan in Ibn Abbas, and it is in online. But the brother here just said, brother in humanity, it doesn't exist in Arabic. I've never heard such thing. So we, Arabs apparently don't have a concept to be. So if that's the case, why is there so much violence in the Middle East? <laughs> if we know anything, we, is we know what to be. So you know the word wasn't exist before. <laughs> You know the word wasn't exist before. Okay. Now the person says in Arabic. Uh -huh. Okay, the word wasn't existed. Oh, now like it exists. Previous comment. Oh, now it exists. If you want to tell someone he beat someone else, you would give a context. Mm -hmm. So one, if you have a context, then the the word in Arabic which wasn't exist suddenly becomes exist. Oh, okay. So the context makes it exist. I'm sorry. Do they not think that they're speaking to an Arab? Uh, hey, is I'm an Arab. Yeah. Beat means to beat. Same in English. Like the context is uh, beat your wife, beat with a sword, beat with a uh, flog. It's the same thing. You're still beating someone. Um, I'll give you an example. Idrab zawjatak. Beat your wife. How's that? Simple. English and Arabic. Sister, <laughs> you can't give it in Arabic because it does not exist in Arabic. Which part you don't understand? But it now it exists. Exist. But now the, there's a context. All of a sudden, it exists. Uh, your taqiyya is changing before our eyes. You're just changing all, all the time. And didn't you? Aren't you the same person who told us that it, it's hit? Yeah, no, it wasn't. The oh, we got we got screenshots of all your comments. You said before it we means hit. We don't have the screenshots yet, but we will take the screenshots. We will take screenshots of all your comments. Hit, you said first it was hit, and then you said it doesn't exist, and now it changed, it, it exists with a context. Um, someone is calling me through Skype. I am already on the line with a guest on Skype. Please, like, no need for you to call me, because why? if I have someone on the line, I cannot take your call. There is a Friday evening open Skype. You are very welcome to call. And please don't call me 2 o'clock in the morning. Don't call me 5 o'clock in the morning either still doesn't change that it's friday you need to call in i'm not going to answer your calls and especially don't call me when oh, i have already got someone on the line like practically i can't answer that it just like changes my screen and i don't like changing so i i do same things i sit the same spot every day <laughs> 
just like so sister i want to ask you since you recently visited the subject matter what is what, what is to? what is being beaten like what's the context and uh, what was it like excuse me like <laughs> you recently uh, were on the receiving end of uh, the word idrab in speaker's corner can you tell us what it was like it wasn't handkerchief sister was and it? so i think we are uh, mainly we are talking about how allah is allowing how allah is allowing ayub islamic job to beat his wife with 100 lashes how Allah is allowing Muslim men to beat their wife, Surah 434. That's not enough. How Allah turned blind eye when Muhammad beat his wife, Aisha, that child. See, ideology of Islam. Uh, like, Islam is like already like one of the very worst ideology out there very much dangerous ideology there is a problem with their god but their prophets are all very much messed up so messed up it is screaming full violence to the wives not helpful at all not very much helpful at all and in this occasion gospel of luke chapter 19 is not going to help you either you have to explain to the standards of Allah, morality of Allah, when Allah encourages a Islamic job to lashes his wife with hundred lashes. That's all it is. There is no for you to turn around the bushes and then come to the Bible. You've got to learn to be accountable to your teachings. I have to say, sister, I'm very, very impressed at the level of taqiyya that I've seen. I've never seen this le level of taqiyya before. It's 21st century, sister. Islam is developing. So as centuries goes on, taqiyya takes more place and more place and more place. It's amazing. I can't be... Okay, this is like so much heartbreaking. <laughs> this is so much heartbreaking. Uh, a sister goes to... Oxford Dictionary and then find the definition of the beat and strike and hit. But the problem is, those words were not exist in Islam according <laughs> to Muslims. Therefore, they don't follow the Oxford Dictionary. When they are scholars, when they are scholars translated to those Arabic sources, they translated some a word which was uh, which was not there at the first place. Their scholars lie to Muslims. See that how sad it is? And it doesn't matter which dictionary. Even if uh, we we gave them the lexicon, Lane's dictionary with the English and Arabic. And sister, it's the same. I, I, I keep telling people, Arabic is not this strange, strange, mysterious language. What's in English can be translated in Arabic just like in any other language. It is to beat and strike repeatedly and violently. You find the same in Arabic dictionaries, classical Arabic dictionaries. Arabs are not this different species that have different words and different meanings for those words. Human beings, yeah? Arabic is just another language. And we do have a word for beat. It does exist. Stop being silly. If you're going to do taqiyya, at least make it believable. And I use the word silly because I'm on sister's live stream and I can't use other words. Go on, sister. Okay. Um, if the prophet, like a married woman, then her husband must divorce her so that the prophet can put a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Muhammad has privileges in Islam, 16 privileges that no one else has. Um, of course, I'm not talking about his him to beat his wife, all those kind of things, but if Muhammad turns up to your home and then says he wants to have your wife for his sexual desire, you must give your wife. If he turns up to your home and then tells your father he wants your mother for his sexual desire, she must go. 
Yeah, these are the uh, benefit, the privileges of for the prophet. I think there's about sixteen. Sixteen of them. Yeah, we can go through them, um, sister. Another um, time. Yeah, we did that at speaker school a couple of times, but we can do short live stream on it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's Surah thirty three. Yes, famous Surah. That's famous Surah. Um. Anyway, daughter of Christ, why don't you? um summarize for us what we've done so far i've got like problems but i think you can summarize them well uh yeah it's just one of the many problems of islam uh one of them is the beating of the wives goes back to all the, apparently some of the prophets did it according to the quran one of them is job he did it while he was on a, a ill yeah, he, uh, according to Surah 38, verse 44, he made an oath. And Allah just had had to have him confirm, do his oath, perform his oath. And uh, he, he tells them, take in your hand a bundle of grass and strike your wife so that, that you do not break your oath. So the Quran doesn't tell us a context of anything because it just throws verses out of context all the time. So we have to go to the tafsirs to find out what the story was. So we go to Ibn Abbas, Muhammad's cousin, and one of the great scholars of the Ummah, uh, his tafsir of that verse, and he says he vowed, Job had vowed, if only if Allah cures him, he would flog his wife, 100 lashes, because she, apparently she said something bad. And then when he Allah did cure him, Allah told him to go ahead and do it, and he did it. Uh, and uh, same, we find the same in Tafsir Jalalain as well, of the same verse. And we just have some questions that none of the Muslims could answer, apart from running around in circles and saying silly things. W one question is, why, why would a prophet of God who Muslims think are near perfect do such a thing, say that he would lash his wife a hundred times for something that seems so, well, it shouldn't be done at all that you'd lash your wife. And why would Allah let him when Allah would may, uh, let Muhammad break his oath in Surah 66 verse 2 on, on something else? And um, we just questioned the beating of women in Islam is so pervasive that the prophets did it, Muhammad did it, and Surah 424, Muslims are allowed to do it. And uh, we didn't get an answer, sister, did you? I, didn't, I don't remember a good answer. Actually, I did get answer. I think this comes from a Christian. Re reminds us recent video which um, Sheikh Yassikadi put it up and simply encouraged people to skip the third part. Do not beat your wife because that doesn't work. That breaks the marriages. But um, he knows, of course, much better than Allah, much better than Islamic um, job and much better than Muhammad. So wait, I thought beat didn't exist in uh, Arabic. But now Yasser Qadi is telling Muslims not to beat. No, he says skip that part. Which part does not exist in Arabic? He says like skip it. Skip skip it from Surah 424. Okay, got it. Yeah, let's practice it. Let's practice it. See how not only Islamic prophets are wife beaters, but it again shows us how uh, shows of how Islam is false religion, Allah is false God, Muhammad is false prophet, because Islam screams out that we do not make distinction between prophets, but being very biased to Muhammad when it comes to his oath regarding his sexual desire versus ve not very supportive of a man to beat his wife with hundred lashes, yet he can fulfill his oath, yet they don't make any distinctions between them, but Allah is very, very biased. Allah is very much biased. Of course, overall, that takes the value, dignity, and honor of woman in both of occasions. And sadly, Islam and followers of Islam simply think, oh, if we lie about it, we can get away about we can get away with that. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow. But one day, when you stand in front of the Lamb of God on the Day of Judgment, I am afraid to tell you, you cannot turn around the bushes 
you cannot play, play that monkey game because it's not going to help you at all. It is not going to help you at all. You will be accountable because you are following ideology which is full of false, full of holes, full of dangerous teachings in it. But main danger is these ideologies taking you to hell. As well as not only like Christian hell, but also to Islamic hell. Very sad, very much sad. Since yeah. I can't, I can't believe like without any shame, Muslims are still, still, still leaving their ears, their hearts, their brains in somewhere else and going to Bible. Yeah, that's the Fakia game. When all else fails, jump to the Bible. Dear Muhammad, I just told you I am on the Skype right now. I can't take calls. There is no need for you to call me. And I told that you can call us on Friday. Please practice that. Um, Dr. of Christ, do you want to do the conclusion statements? Yeah, I conclude that your Takiya game is weak to the people in the chat. <laughs> That's what I conclude. <laughs> I've been waiting patiently for answers and uh, it was really, really bad, sister. This is like one of these streams that I'm really, really disappointed because they weren't even trying anymore. Uh, we wanted an answer why Allah would let this cruelty from one of his prophets, apparently, uh, calling him an excellent slave, a great servant, obedient to Allah, after telling him to beat his wife a hundred times. I, it's just amazing. And uh, why is it that he allowed Muhammad to break his oath, but he wouldn't allow or tell Job to break his oath that was so cruel and unnecessary to beat his wife a hundred times? Did you hear that? If you want to be called godly man in Islam... All you've got to do is beat your wife with 100, 100 lashes. You will be identified as godly man, servant of Allah, exalted servant of Allah. And that's the definition of mercy in Islam. With that in note, I think we will end our live stream here tonight. Thank you very much for everyone who joined us. And another disappointed night for night from our Muslim friends who doesn't have like any answer, like seriously, zero answer to the live streams, zero answer to the questions are posed to Islam. Sad, sad day. Muslims are just causing Islam to bury it. It's not only Shabir Ali, it is other Muslims at all. Uh, other Muslims as well. They are all working together to destroy Islam. Um, and everyone else, beloved ones, thank you very much for joining us and moderators. Thank you very much for keeping individuals uh, on the line, on the order. I think tomorrow lunchtime we've got live stream and then we've got another live stream tomorrow evening. Tomorrow evening with Dr. J. Smith, tomorrow lunchtime. There's a live stream probably with Daughter of Christ uh, looking at the why people who's got brain converts to Islam. And then we will hear the, some creepy testimonies and then see if there is any reasonable reason that people convert to Islam. And then with that, they try to tell us how Islam awesome ideology. We will be looking at that. But until then... Beloved ones, may our crucified and risen Lord silently with his love and dear Muslim friends, remember on the day of judgment when you stand in front of the Lamb of God, you will be accountable to him. Therefore, while you are breathing out and breathing in, come to him, repent and accept him as the eternal son of God. And by believing in him, you will have life and that life will be eternal. God bless you all. We will see you tomorrow.